Now one million UFO enthusiasts on Facebook say they'll storm Area 51. Air Force officials issued a warning response saying in part, we would discourage anyone from trying to come into this area where we train American armed forces to this day. The U.S. Air Force always stands ready to protect America. It sounds like there's going to be a problem. So what is it that drives our continued fascination with the subject and Area 51? Joining us now to discuss is maybe the country's uh, greatest expert, the author of Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top secret military base. Annie Jacobson joins us. Annie, uh, when did this obsession with Area 51 begin? Decades. I mean, you know, Area 51 is the Shangri-La of conspiracy theories that involve UFOs. It's kind of this American archetype of whenever the UFO mythology comes up in our in our culture, all emphasis goes to Area 51. I think that's why a million people are going to are talking about storming the place. And it certainly has the U.S. Air Force. Uh, it has the ear of the U.S. Air Force. Because a spaceship crashed there and then we took the aliens captive to study them. Is that the problem? <laughs> That's one way of thinking. <clears throat> you know, Area 51 is this classified military facility that since sits inside a test and training range that's also classified that is the size of essentially the state of Connecticut. So there is so much activity going on out there, overhead espionage, uh, countermeasures against electronic warfare, paramilitary training. It's got all these elements, and you throw the UFO lore into it, you got a lot of ears and eyeballs on Area 51. I mean, back in the 1950s, they were testing the U-2 spy plane there, and we know Saddam Hussein, they had forces training to capture Saddam Hussein prior to the Iraq war. That was going on there, and it didn't help in 2017 when the Pentagon confirmed the existence of a $22 million government program to analyze anomalous aerospace threats, also known as UFOs, given the alien-obsessed people who are about to see something else to go on, hard, hard and fast facts. If these thousands get together and storm the area, they could be under a military attack, couldn't they? I mean, I don't know if it would even come close to that, because I can imagine, you know, that base is so jealously guarded, both in terms of media and in terms of actual physicality. I don't think the Air Force or any of the other military partners or intelligence community partners that are all working out there at Area 51 are going to let anybody anywhere near the entrance to Area 51. And lastly, uh, when you talk about this book that you wrote and the studying that you did and research to put it out, what was the most intriguing thing that you came up with? You know, I would have to say it has a lot to do with cover stories and disinformation. That's playing out today. I'll give you a brief example. Like, a cover story would be if I said to you, if I said to my husband, I'm going on to get some coffee and really I was here on Fox News. That's a cover story. You say you're doing one thing, you're really doing something else. Disinformation, misinformation is when you put out a different story. In 1950, there was a plane crash at Area 51, just outside Area 51 at Mount Charleston. It was a group of CIA uh, scientists who were working on the U-2 spy plane. When the plane crashed, the CIA behind the scenes went, oh, my God, our, our secret is going to be blown. The public's going to know about this U-2 spy plane we're building. Instead, the local paper in Las Vegas reported a story that these were scientists working on nuclear bombs out there. Bingo. The CIA had its own disinformation misinformation campaign that had been created by the local newspaper. Gotcha. And I think we're seeing a little bit of that today. Absolutely. And we'll see what happens. I think people should wise up and understand it's an active military base. Uh, it's not a game. Uh, thanks so much. I appreciate Annie Jacobson. Thank you.